Today is my last day in England. Now, this is probably one of the last times you'll ever see this house because when I get back from my trip, I will be moving house. So more on that a few months down the line. Uh, but the last thing to do is to put the Moto Guzzi on charge. Now, I've just bought a new charger off of Amazon. Uh, so let's go and do that and then we'll be heading off to the airport. <laughs> So that is the Gutsy on charge. Uh, do excuse the mess of a garage at the minute. I'm in the middle of packing things up before we move and then obviously we're going away, which is not ideal timing. We're hoping to be moved in by now, but nothing usually goes directly to plan, as a lot of you will know. <laughs> but I'm gonna miss this bike. I absolutely adore this thing and I've got a load of parts on the way and I think one of them in particular is holding everything else up because a lot of them are being uh, handmade and it'll be worth it in the end so hopefully by the time I get back all of those will have arrived and we can start fitting them to the bike but my god this thing is going to look incredible when I'm done with it not that it doesn't already but it's gonna look even better <laughs> Hello and welcome to Tokyo. You join me in a little back street here. Uh, it's a beautiful city this and it is absolutely scorching hot. 32 degrees and it's so humid. It's even more humid than England. Oh, that crow's got a funny, uh, funny voice. What is that? Is that a crow? Weird. But I'm on my way to a motorcycle shop called Brat Style, which is uh, very famous actually, really well known in Tokyo. Now we got here yesterday and it was so jet lagged. I mean, 16 hours of flying. Uh, a little bit jet lagged today, but had a good night's sleep. Uh, but it's weird getting used to the time because it's you know eight hours ahead here so it's completely different the time zone i keep going the wrong way i'm not going that way just first impressions of the city walking around for one day the motorcycle culture here is so different to england it really is they love motorbikes and i was expecting to see a lot of japanese bikes hondas yamahas kawasaki's uh, I've seen a few of those, but sorry about that, that's a loud train. Uh, but I've seen a lot more custom Harley Davidsons, Triumphs, all in sort of, uh, the Triumphs are like cafe racer style, all customised uh, and sort of choppery looking Harleys, really cool stuff. Uh, and you don't really see much of that in England, so it's really nice to see. And I think if we had more of that in England, you'd see a lot more younger people getting into motorbikes because you'd see them go past and they look so cool. You'd just think, I've got to go and get one of those. So this shop that I'm heading to now specialise in exactly that, custom motorcycles, and they look absolutely awesome. So let's head there and take a look. Take a look at this. Just spotted this on the side of the road. That's lovely. cafe racer see these sorts of things everywhere I mean that is just the start I mean I've seen some really cool bikes today uh, I can't wait to see what's in this shop and hopefully they'll let me have a ride on one I've bought my gear and I've bought my license and I've brought my uh, international driving permit so fingers crossed here we go then we're just outside brat style there's already an awesome looking bike out the front so let's have a look at what's inside. Oh, that is cool.
Well, that was a very cool shot, um, but unfortunately, the manager is off today, um, and they said I can't. Re they can't really let me out on a bike. Oh, that's nice. Uh, they can't really let me out on a bike without his permission, uh, and he's not going to be here for two days. And we've got a typhoon coming in two days, and then I'll be out of Tokyo. So it's not looking hopeful. Um, for this one unfortunately but in, next week I will be in Kyoto and I have arranged to ride a bike there uh, so I, I know I've got that booked in and that is a very cool bike which we don't get in England so I'm looking forward to that one although that was a partial success because I still got to see some awesome bikes pretty glad I went there uh, unfortunately I didn't get to ride one I would have loved to ride one um, it was a bit of a language barrier uh, so we had to use Google Translate, but it just shows you how useful that is. Without that, you wouldn't be able to do a lot. Tonight, uh, or heading there now, going to uh, Golden Guy, which is an area in Tokyo, which is sort of really narrow streets, and they're all like speakeasy bars. Uh, so they've got like six bar stalls in them. They're really small, um, but they're quite cool. So I'm going to go for a little bar crawl around there. Uh, so if anything interesting happens, I might take you along with me. Uh, but if it doesn't, then I won't. So stay tuned. following day and I just come under this underpass under a train track I just hit my head on it I wasn't looking where I was going I was looking at the maps bloody hell I mean you've got to be four foot tall to get under there Christ that hurt uh, a little bit worse for weather today um, after last night but today I've decided to try another motorcycle shop this one is called Spice Motorcycles and they specialise uh, in Harley Davidson sort of choppers and stuff like that. So um, should be interesting. Let's go and check it out. Now just coming around the corner and already there's some awesome bikes out the front. Wow, look at that. Wow, look at that Indian there. Some really incredible vintage Harleys and Indians here. Absolutely amazing. Now the chat, again, I'm, I have a bit of a language barrier, so uh, I only speak very minimal Japanese and uh, they only speak very minimal uh, English. But I said, uh, have you got any bikes I could take out for a little ride, and do some video on? Uh, he sort of said yes, but he said it's lunchtime. So uh, lunchtime finishes at one which is in 45 minutes uh, so I'll go back at one o'clock and hopefully I can take out a bike but he said up the road there is a vintage uh, Triumph and Kawasaki dealership so I'm going to check that one out quickly while I wait just look at this parking bay they've got a little turntable and they park the cars one above the other, stacked up. That's pretty cool. You don't see stuff like that uh, in other countries. Japan is so innovative. Now the place that the guy recommended was closed. So I looked up if there's any other dealers nearby. And it came up with this one. And it said it was open, but it's not, <laughs> it's closed. So uh, that's a bit of a pain. But, uh, Suzuki time, lad. There is a Yamaha. Oh, actually, I think it is open. Ah, oh, I was wrong. Let's go inside. Ah. 
well that was open but uh, very much so a uh, workshop type of vibe so uh, didn't want to intrude upon his work too much but uh, lovely Kawasaki in there I don't actually know what model that is but six cylinders uh, now we rode a, a CBX uh, 1000 is it 1000 yeah I think it is uh, a couple of months ago 1980 Honda and that was incredible but that Kawasaki is clearly uh, its direct competitor so what an amazing bike cool to see one in person and in Japan can't get much better than that but uh, it's half 12 now so I'm gonna start heading back to the other place hopefully they'll let me out on a Harley
Well, that was absolutely incredible. Uh, just went for a ride on this Harley Davidson chopper. The first time on a chopper, unbelievable. The bars are really narrow. This has a 1971 Harley Davidson engine in it and a Triumph gearbox. So it's got the gears on the right, uh, left foot brake, which was the rear brake was actually much better than the front brake, which took me by surprise. I pulled the front brake in and I wasn't stopping, so I got a bit scared. <laughs> but uh, what a bike, absolutely awesome. They build it all here. So this is uh, Spice Motorcycles. So if you're ever in um, Japan or Tokyo, definitely come and check these guys out. They make some incredible um, custom choppers, Harley Davidsons. Uh, I don't know if they're doing the Indians, uh, it's all Harleys here, but my God, they know what they're doing. They make some really cool bikes. So thank you so much to them for letting me ride this chopper. I think that is actually one of the coolest things I've ever done. Nothing comes close to that. That was so cool to ride around Tokyo on a chopper. I just, I mean, I wasn't expecting to be able to do that. I tried a place yesterday, which you would have seen earlier in the video, and unfortunately they wouldn't let me out on a bike. Uh, but these guys were very happy to um, and I just can't believe it, what a bike, absolutely awesome. The sound it makes. Now when you come to a proper old Harley, I've never ridden an old Harley. The oldest one I've ridden before this was a uh, 2017 Dyna Fat Boy, or it might have been a Fat Bob actually, I can't even remember now. Um, but you don't get that proper old school Harley feel. You do a bit with the Dyners, but with the Milwaukee 8s, it doesn't really deliver that. It's much more smooth and ironed out. Whereas these old Harleys, you feel absolutely everything in the bike. There's so much character. You feel the engine shaking you. Uh, it shakes your skull, but my God, is it cool. And it sounds so good. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. I've certainly enjoyed it. Uh, and stay tuned for the next one.